the Conowingo Dam. A man-made haven for migrating bald eagles. One of the premier locations to see large groups of eagles in the United States. Where eagles gracefully glide and hunt like you're not even there. Where else can you stand with hundreds of photographers and not scare the wildlife? Where eagles swoop down and grab stunned fish on a daily basis. Where eagles come from all over the U.S. to survive. Perhaps find a mate. Kanawingo is a place where nothing is given and they all want the same thing to eat. Here, to eat, you must be willing to fight. I know this is not the only place to see this, but it sure is one of the best. If this were to end and the Eagles left Kanawingo, a common saying at the dam is you should have been here yesterday, or last year, or five years ago. There's a lot of truth in this jest. Since my first time here in 2015, it seems the number of eagles at Kinawingo are declining, that it's not what it used to be. Many theories exist as to why. Is it too warm? Many eagles come from up north, and when the water freezes, it forces eagles to find food in places like Kinawingo. Are there too many people? On any given day, hundreds of people line up along the dam to watch these eagles. Has the dam gotten more crowded? Are we keeping them from their natural instincts? Is the dam running out of fish? The eagles come here for fish that go through the dam's turbines and either die or get stunned, leaving them floating on the water's surface. Most of these floaters are a huge part of eagles' diets. One species, the American Shed, has been declining for years at Kanawingo. Perhaps the eagles are catching them at too high of a rate, or something else is causing the shad to decline. Many believe that the eagle population at Kanawingo is relative to the amount of fish present. This is the second year in a row I've seen eagles with or fighting over garbage. Is there enough food for the amount of eagles here? Is there enough fish to sustain this consistent eagle attack? These are questions I don't know the answer to, 
but all may factor into the current eagle numbers at Condawingo. The first few years I went here, it was amazing. I got more great shots in one day than I got from a whole year filming eagles in my home in New York. The dam is a blessing, but with this comes the curse. Now, anything short of the perfect day can be a disappointment, and it can be easy to take this place for granted. I made it too far. After two years in a row of slow action, I began to rethink my experiences here. The thought of the Eagles leaving made me change my attitude. I think we sometimes have the wrong mindset and have to remind ourselves of why we go here. While we're concerned about how many Eagles and the action, or how we can get the best photo, sometimes we forget that the Eagles are fighting for food, fighting for life. And the fact that we get to witness this is just the bonus. Wingo Dam is a man-made anomaly. This isn't natural. Eagles have just used this to their advantage. Can something that isn't natural be sustained? But how long can this last? Maybe a better question is, how can we better appreciate what we have now? Although we miss the old days at the dam, there's still plenty to enjoy. For anyone looking to visit Kinawingo, go for it. But know this, nature is unpredictable. No two days are the same. If you come here looking for perfection, you won't find it. Some days are good and some aren't, but that's part of the adventure. And when you do catch it on the right day, it will be something that you won't forget. Instead of asking what the Eagles can do for us, how about we ask what we can do for the Eagles? Because a slow day at the dam is better than a day anywhere else.